What do we got? Do we know this bull? More bulls are coming, but where's that one bull? Here's the, to the left. Okay. There he is. Shit, I think that might be the big bull. Hopefully we can get another herd, but uh, we've been in here 
It's our third time in here. I've seen one cow. You're looking at it and I've seen eight or nine different bulls. So I don't know if there's any cows in here. Yeah, I don't know what to do. My theory is that it was a full moon and the way that bull was chasing her, he literally, we think he ran her into the ground. So weird. He probably tried to breed her again. So we waited 15 minutes to see if he would come through that saddle, which he should have. He didn't. He should have came through that saddle solo. For sure. And I don't see his tracks going up. So back at the cow, I'm gonna look for tracks going down. Yeah, we heard those rocks. You did, I didn't, but yeah. That's what I told you. If you think you heard something, you probably did. And that's the closest water, so he's probably tired as hell. What's the closest water? The pivot? There's no water in the bottom of this? No. Well, we had that big bull chasing that cow like a wolf pack. There's actually two small bulls behind him. They're just coming after her, and she had her butt up against the tree. She was full on in heat estrus, and they're just doing what bulls do. Um, they ran her into the ground. You know, Jake had a good idea. He was like, it's a full moon. They probably never stopped chasing her. And so I think that cow just died of exhaustion, as crazy as it sounds. So we saw that she was dead and we knew that bull could either go down the canyon or go up in bed, but he couldn't go out because it's boxed in. Well, we couldn't find his track. We couldn't find where he was. And we took too much time to get in there. Threw out calls, nothing. So he gave us the slip. I think he kind of went back out where those two satellites bulls ended up leaving back out the way he came. Um, and we probably just missed it when we were in the timber. So we're going to reset. And I don't have cell phone service to call fishing game to say, hey, can I get a salvage tag on this cow? But uh, that cow is just nature. Nature happened. That was such a nice bull. It's the second time we've been on him. Ugh. All he had to do was come out this saddle and we were right there at 40 yards. So once she died and he left, we were, uh, I thought she was going to take him right through the saddle, which she probably would have if she hadn't died. And we were right there at that pinch. So we know this area pretty well, but it's time to go check out new country. So we're going to go check a, check this other canyon and see if we can come in from the top and drop into this other side. that has got a little bit of water. It's going to be hot the next couple of days. So we're going to head back to the truck, move the truck. We got a mobile camp. We are gypsy elk hunting. Go find something else to hunt. Cool, guys. Good evening. We didn't get you much footage after uh, running into that cow that died. Uh, Jake drunk crashed or couldn't find it, and uh, took him an hour or so. We found a random little mini wildfire. No joke. We maybe a lightning strike. I don't know, but it wasn't huge. We put it out. Didn't see but one bull tonight, and we glassed probably a four-hour session from a giant master vantage spot. I mean, could see everywhere. Uh, so super disappointing evening. We pulled the stakes, loaded up the truck, and drove over to this area where we literally saw elk cross this highway and head up to these mountains in the dark. And I just marked it on base map and we decided to come here. We've seen a couple camps. I think water's a little dry, it's a little dry here. So the elk might be concentrated in the mornings getting water, but uh, it's really good elk country, it's good timber. And so I'm crashing tonight in Jake's, back of Jake's truck, he's sleeping on top in the, uh, Sweet and the, uh, what, I don't know what you call that. The, the penthouse. House. The penthouse or the bunkhouse. I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, we're having fun. That 350 bull today, he's 350. It's just unbelievable bull. He ran that cow ragged. I just elk are primal. And that's the bottom line. And that's how we're going to get one killed. So we're going to go find a primal bull tomorrow. Meantime, thanks for watching, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Dan Staten here with Elk Shape. I wanted to personally invite anybody 
wanting to punch their elk tag in 2021 to attend one of our elk shape camps. Check out the link in the video description on where our camp locations are. And if you are interested, use the discount code YouTube and save $50 off registration. This offer expires December 31st, 2020. Let's make 2021 the best year yet. And let's get your elk tag punched. And I look forward to meeting you. September 2nd, dude, that bull, <sighs> sick. That's a good looking Idaho bull, guys. Uh, that's a really nice public land bull. And he's probably pretty smart. He's probably like varsity level smart. Done some things different than other bulls to make it that far through archery, muzzy, and rifle seasons year in and year out. But yeah, uh, great looking bull. Uh, when we saw him and got him on the phone scope, I mean, we were scrambling. Uh, we were also really stoked. The thing that we didn't get on video was that there was a couple other raggies behind him with their tongues hanging out, like they'd been chasing that cow. And we got that cow, we didn't get on video, but she ran up against a tree, the only tree in the sage flat, and was like putting her butt against it like wolves were chasing her, except for it wasn't wolves, it was all these bulls just running her around. So it was crazy to walk up to this cow that we had just seen alive. And then it was also super sad because the baby calf, and that was a small calf, was just like, didn't know what was going on and didn't want to leave its mom and it was dead. And we were just like, what do we do? We don't have cell service. We can't call this into fishing game. What are they gonna do anyways? Like it would take them a long time to get there and to hike into where we found. I mean, so we just didn't know what to do, but I guess to distill it all down, Mother nature is cruel. So and harsh, man. It, she so doesn't harsh. care. This stuff happens in real life. You see bucks fighting all the time, whitetails, and they die in a pond fighting, or even bulls lock up and they die. Bulls die during the rut. Like they try to kill each other for breeding rights. And sometimes I guess cows die when they get ran into the ground on a full moon. I figured that cow probably got ran all night and all morning. And we just saw her last five minutes of being alive and she was still running for her life. So that kind of set the tone for, with between that happening and those crazy jerks down, you know, in the pivot, chasing those elk around, I was like, this is just all par for the course year of the COVID. Like, what else could go wrong? What is, yeah, what is going on? Interesting start to the season, but man, pretty exciting to see that big bull. Highlights and lowlights, and so strange, like, mm. All the years you've been elk hunting, have you seen anything like that? I've never seen a cow die because of whatever, old age or just exha exhaustion. I think the exhaustion has to be the, the only thing I come up with, given like the vomit all over her lips and all over the ground. Like, I think her body just quit on her and she was in survival mode, uh, which is too bad because she was supporting that calf. Uh, we hope that calf made it. You know, hunters want to kill these animals to eat them. But we're also, it's a dichotomy, we're also their biggest fans and rooting for them to make it and to live a great healthy life and to have this renewable resource for all of us to enjoy. So Mother Nature, you're cruel. And don't forget that and always have respect when you head outdoors. Episode three, Elk Wranglers. One of this, another just strange, strange thing. We got a lot of comments, man. But I, the main thing I would say is that I, I had no idea what we were gonna see when we posted this. And mainly what we saw was a bunch of people who were like, thank you for, thank you for posting this. Like this kind of thing shouldn't happen and it does happen and it just gets swept under the rug. So we got a lot of those comments, a lot of those comments, up tree, up doors. That's such BS, but what can you do? As always, you guys kick butt. Thanks for sharing. Um, Kyle, Dreher, so sad to see. Thank you for showing this. Makes me mad to see all those elk stuck where they're trying to destroy the herd. Back to the positivity. Another guy said something like, man, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, but those guys didn't even get to shoot one of those fish. And that made me really thankful. Like, yeah. I, of all the weird stuff we saw, at least an elk didn't go down. We were, I don't know if we got video footage of it, but we were literally rooting for the elk from watching it from afar. Um, and what's crazy is that the comments have been really positive and people even reached out to me on Instagram, which is a different platform to tell me, thank you for, you know, shining some positivity in a negative situation. Um, one guy even reached out and said that he thinks that his cousin is the landowner and he was going to make sure that, was, uh, that he got, you know, was able to see the footage and to, to help figure out a solution, um, to potentially 
getting fishing game to help spend the money and get that elk fence completely done all the way around so that the elk just don't go into that pivot, which ideally, and someone asked what an elk pivot is. A pivot is just a, a basically irrigation where it pivots and does like a half circle or sometimes a full circle. And that's just, you'll see the green, the alfalfa or whatever that they're green, they're growing is from the pivot. So the, it's just an irrigation system and uh, the elk, you know, it's kind of a weird place, a weird setting. You have a desert, you have awesome mountains, and then you just have this oasis of green lush alfalfa. <laughs> I don't blame the elk. I would probably want to get groceries there too. But uh, yeah, I just don't think uh, I just don't think that uh, hunting needs to be uh, controversial. We need to make it, you know, positive and show people why we do it. Um, and somebody made a comment that it's it's more about the journey, the ups and the downs, and all the hard work and the failures and the success, and I couldn't agree more. I think that's exactly what hunting's all about. It's not just shooting an elk fish in the barrel because uh, that's just not what it is. Yeah. yeah, man, so thanks for your positivity. This is the public land hustle. We wanted to show it how it was. Do us a favor, if you're into this kind of thing, subscribe to the channel. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Those things help more than you know. And hit the little bell, and we'll catch you back here for the next one. Spot. We just got on elk super fast this morning. That is awesome. Finally, I heard. Where's that bull? I'm gonna get this bull scoped up, see what he is.